A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. How many of us find talking about our sex lives uncomfortable? Tiffany Kugure Mugo and Sifu Mize Kundai want to change that. Tiffany and Sifu Mize are the leaders of Hala Africa, which stands for Hub of Loving Action in Africa. Their mission is to educate and spark honest dialogue about sex and sexuality in African communities. And today they explain why the more women discuss sex, desire, and their bodies, the more authentic they'll feel in their sexuality. The thing about sex is that it's so taboo, but we want it so damn bad. We want to feel it, we want to stand by it, we want to engage with it, but we also want to pretend that it doesn't exist. The thing is, speaking about our sex in groups is hard, and it seems that there's a little bit of a mass silence. When was the last time you spoke about your staying power, or your favorite sex positions, or even your orgasms with those around you? It would seem that there's a little bit of a mass silence, and we're hiding gems of goodness and guidance from each other. (laughs) But... We are actually here to tell you about women talking about their sex, more specifically African women, and why this is important for us to do all the time. Because the thing is, as women, we don't properly actively engage with our sex, either because we tell ourselves to not be open about our thrust game, or we are told that we shouldn't, as proper women, be chatting about it. But when it comes to ideas of our bodies, our sex, and our pleasure, we're more often than not silent. And this hush-hush attitude allows for ideas of rape culture and accepting bad shags to seep in and settle. (laughs) Right? Let me clarify. By rape culture, we mean ideas of women's bodies as something to be owned, something to be conquered. Things like smashing the pussy, giving her the D, penetration. All of these words imply being overpowered whilst we wait idly by as women for the phallic symbol to orbit and prepare for entry. (laughs) And the thing is, we're silent because how can we speak business that isn't ours? But it is our business. We're not meant to be silent during sex, but active, willing, and engaged participants who know who, what, and why they are doing what they're doing. And this takes time and knowledge. You don't just simply wake up a sensei of sex and throw tricks around the table, right? (laughs) You've got to study, and this knowledge of how to handle your hotbox is going to come from within our own ranks. It is! Some of the most powerful, helpful conversations about a woman and her sex come from other women. Why? Let's take it back a bit. Hmm. So colonization and religion have completely reshaped ideas and ultimately the expression of African sexuality. Um, African women and men have been, and to a great extent, still are defined in terms of body deviancy and bestiality. One only needs to look at pornography and the way that the black body is portrayed, right? It's more often than not portrayed in a violent and animalistic way, because no sensual sex for us. No. We haven't been as silent as we think about sex. We actually haven't. In fact, we have been so chatty about it because across the continent, they existed and continue to exist sexuality training schools. And all of these schools were created to impart girls with the knowledge on sexuality, pleasure, and to create a female identity. They were taught things like sexual cues. They were taught sexual enhancers. For example, these waist beads that were made of glass and pearls and sometimes clay, and they functioned as sex toys. I mean, these women were taught to ignite passions through a look a walk, dance moves, gestures, pelvic movements, aphrodisiacs, everything that you would want to know about sex. And apart from this, some tribes had marital advisors that that, um, advised the girl or the married couple in the art of sex. For example, in Mali, the advisor joins the newlywed couple in the bedroom on the wedding night. So when women come together in these spaces to speak about their sex, they just, they draw strength. 
And because you realize that there is safety in numbers, you realize that there is knowledge in numbers. When women speak about these things, they rip apart the cloak of silence that brings about fear and shame because you realize we're all in this together. You're not the only one who thinks your nipples are shaped funny or has masturbated. You are not the only one who has fantasized or faked orgasms. You're not the only one who has tried that thing and liked it. <laughs> that what the assault that happened to you the other night actually shouldn't have happened. That you are not meant to be ashamed. You are not meant to be afraid, and you are not meant to be in pain, because you know what? You are actually not the only one. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Cape Town, South Africa. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers, who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Cape Town Women. Want to listen to more TEDx Talks? Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDxShorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.